Welcome to my channel. My name is Rainer from Rainier Books. Herzlich willkommen. Welcome to my channel here on YouTube. Ska vi säga på svenska? That's what we would say in Swedish in this country. Uh, the window is open outside and I don't know if you can hear the rain. It's really raining. It's very dark. The sky is very dark. It's chilly. It's not... I haven't been outside today. I have watched a lot of YouTube videos, not by bookish people, but other YouTube videos. I listened to some podcasts. Uh, today I want to talk about the best books I've read so far this year, because I discovered in my booktube feed that I have on YouTube uh, that um, people like Chris from Chris Bookish Cauldron have done it, uh, Simon Savage from Savage Read has done it, of course Eric Anderson has done it, and of course, uh, Camille from What Camille Reads have, has done it already. Summarized the best books that they've read so far this year, and they they took novels. So I will talk about the best ten novels that I read in 2020 so far. Myself that I've read. Oh my God, that was the window. That was the window. Um, I've read so far in 2020. I've read 30 books. I'm going to give you a little statistic afterwards, but the fa 10 favorite novels in alphabetical order by the name of the author are going to be presented now by me. And my number one in that list, which is not a ranking, but an alphabetical list, as I said, is Tash Oz's novel, We the Survivors, it was published in 2018 uh, in London, England. And I, uh, as you can see here, I have um, a book that was signed by the author. I, I haven't met Tash Aw, unfortunately. It was in Foyle's bookshop in London. They sell copies, signed copies of books. And I got me one, I think, last year because I had read The Five Star Billionaire by Tash Aw. This is a book about, this is a confession of a man in Malaysia who has killed um, a migrant in Malaysia. This is a gripping story of racism, of lack of education, lack of chances and uh, transforming society in East Asia. If you are interested in that, it is really a good recommendation. Tash Al is a brilliant author and I loved that book. Book number nine is coming from, uh, I have to open my computer to give you a quote from book number nine. This was Kevin Barry's Night Boat to Tangier. And I read it, it was pretty much the first book that I have read so far this year. This is a book about two Irish gangsters who have their best years behind them and not much lying ahead of them because other people have taken over the business, so to speak. And they sit on a, they sit in the ferry port of Algeciras in Spain and wait for the night boat to Tangier to wait for one of the two guys daughter and there's a there's a lot of banter going on between those two guys who have known each other for many many years and um, one quote is pretty significant that i want to read to you from kevin barry's novel there comes a time when you just have to live among your ghosts you keep the conversation going elsewise the broad field of the future opens out as nothing but a vast emptiness. And this is probably the tone of the book, and I really loved it, although it's very dark. And uh, But it, it, the banter between those two guys, it's such a great novel, such a short novel. I think it's not only, it's only about... Kevin Barry's Night Boat to Tangier is a great read, and you should absolutely read this book. By the way, I thought that my 10 recommendation that my 10 novels, my 10 best novels that I've read so far this year could be as well the top 10 summer reads that I advise you to read if you haven't read them. And if you have read one of those titles or maybe two or maybe three or maybe all of them, please write a commentary down below and tell me what you thought of the books or tell me what your favorite reads of 2020 have been so far and what would you recommend me and other people to read during the summer. <clears throat> Number three on my list of the 10 best novels I've read so far in 2020, Angie Cruz, Dominicana. This is a story about a young migrant girl coming to New York City. She is, I think she's 13, 14 years old when the novel starts. 
And when she comes to New York with her much older husband, she is 15, she gets pregnant and she has a tough life in New York. She doesn't love her husband, but um, she's trying to orientate herself in this new world in the 1960s in New York. It's a brilliant novel about migration and I really loved uh, Dominicana by Angie Cruz, which is nominated in, on the shortlist of the Women's Prize for 2020. And I have some of the, some of the reviews of longer reviews of the books of Tash Oswe, The Survivors, for example, and of Angie Cruz's Dominicana. I will put up links up there, up there to uh, give you the opportunity to see my longer reviews of those books if you're interested. The fourth book I'd like to mention is a hardcover of My God, the Weather is Getting Worse and Worse Outside. Strong winds now and a little thunder. This is, of course, Bernadine Evaristo's Man Book Booker Prize winner of 2019. This is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, where she tells the story of 11 women plus X, um, 11 black British women who, have, who tell all their stories about their coming to the United Kingdom and living in the United Kingdom as black female people. And this is so beautiful. It's written in, in a very poetic language. I just want to give you one quote from... Um, I think it's the wait, wait. I think it's the fifth woman uh, whose telling whose story is told here. Her name is Bumi. Bumi and Augustine agreed they were wrong to believe that in England, at least, working hard and dreaming big was one step away from achieving it. Augustine joked he was acquiring a second doctorate in shortcuts, bottlenecks, one-way streets, and dead ends, while transporting passengers who thought themselves far too superior to talk to him as an equal. Bumi complained that people viewed her through what she did, a cleaner, and not what she was, an educated woman. They did not know that curled up inside her was a parchment certificate proclaiming her a graduate of the Department of Mathematics, University of Ibadan. Just as she did not know that when she strode onto the graduation podium in front of hundreds of people to receive her ribbon scroll and shake hands with the Chancellor of the University, that her first-class degree from a third-world country would mean nothing in her new country. This is from Bernadine Evaristo's brilliant book, um, Girl, Woman, Other, number four on my list of 10 titles, 10 titles, my best reads of 2020, 10 titles that I really recommend you to read during your summer holidays, wherever you are on this planet. Uh, number five of my um, recommendations is a book that I borrowed from the library a couple of months ago. This is uh, Emily Fridland's collection of short stories called Catapult. Very strange collection of short stories like Emily Fridland. I like Emily Fridland's writing a lot. She's a writer that I have um, already cherished and already enjoyed by reading her beautiful novel, I very much enjoyed her first novel, History of Wolves, and I also enjoyed her short stories with very disturbed characters in, um, the, in, in another part of America. Very often the figures are situated, the, the setting is Minnesota, which is a state where I think where Emily Freeland comes from. One quote from one story her here as well. Her love for him has always been the underdog. She roots for it as if from a distance. She imagines what they must look like through the uncurled. She imagines what they must look like through the uncurtained window, the picture of tranquil domesticity they must now make. He smells like cilantro and beer, like curry and rain, and underneath that he smells like himself, like nobody else. His body alarming because it's already so familiar. Emily Fridland's short stories uh, catapult. I enjoyed them a lot. I enjoyed them very much. Number six is uh, a novel that is set in Alaska. I um, read it uh, two or three months ago. That's Chia Chia Lin's novel, the first novel that she has written, The Unpassing, about a young boy telling us his story from Alaska. They are a family of Taiwanese descent and they live outside Anchorage in Alaska. They have a very tough life. It's about their immigrant years. It's about some events in the youth and the in the teenage years and the early teenage years of the character who's telling us the story that have shaped the family that have also split the family and this is told very quietly but very beautifully 
in Chia Chin's novel, The Unpassing. Uh, number seven on my list of 10 books that I've read so far that I would say were the best books that I've read so far, fiction-wise. Um, 10 books that you should read during the summer. This is really fun. It's both fun and it's very um, thought um, evoking. This is Such a Fun Age by uh, Kylie Reed. This is a novel that I read pretty much early this year. And kind of, it's also a debut novel by this Afro-American author where she is uh, bringing together a set of very interesting characters. Um, this is Kylie Reed for the camera, please. Um, Kylie has uh, written a novel here that uh, brings primarily maybe two women together. We have Emira, who is an Afro-American young woman who works as a babysitter for Alex. And Alex, or Alex, is a very successful upper-middle-class blogger, a little older maybe than Emira is, and their relationship is focused on in this amazing novel that shows a lot of race relations that are not racist, primarily in form of abusive or violent, but that have a very um, intellectual and liberal undertone of racism, if you want. So this, I think this is one of the things that uh, Kylie Reid explores in her amazingly beautiful and funny novel, Such a Fun Age. Number eight on my list is another short story collection. I really would like to do interviews on my blog. You know, interviews with authors, and I have uh, one of the authors I would love to interview, uh, maybe I should just write her, is Zalika Reed Benta. She's from Canada. She has written uh, a set of short stories that was published last year already, but uh, also this year, it depends on which country you look at, and it was nominated, it was on the, sh on the long list at least, of the uh, Scotiabank Giller Prize in Canada, and this set of stories is called Frying Plantain. It's a story about, uh, it's, it's about um, Cara, who is a member of the minority, the Jamaican minority in Toronto. They're living in a, in a place that is called Little Jamaica. It's about her teenage years, several episodes from her teenage years, from her upbringing, from her early 20s as well. And this is about three different generations of Jamaican women living in Toronto and how they cope and deal with their cultural heritage from Jamaica uh, and being and living in Canada. And it's a beautiful novel. I would love, it's a beautiful set of short stories, which also could be a novel actually. Number nine, I apparently don't have the book because I thought I had the book, but I probably also borrowed it from a library. And this is Jacqueline Woodson's Red at the Bone. Red at the Bone is an amazing novel by Jacqueline Woodson, who is an amazing author, as everybody knows, who has read anything of her. Uh, she won the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award a couple of years ago and was here in Stockholm to receive it, uh, to take it. Um, Jacqueline Woodson is, has published a very short novel about an American family, an Afro-American family, which is disturbed by the past, by ghosts of the past, where p things have happened in the past, both of the family, but also in Afro-American history. And one of the things that plays an important role in that, uh, two things actually that play a very important part in that history, in that novel, are the Juneteenth, uh, the massacre of black Afro-American people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, about a hundred years ago. And it also, another important role is 9-11. Both of the, these events have shaped and have haunted this family, as we learn. Beautiful characters. It's a family saga in, in less than 300 pages, a uh, thing that maybe Jacqueline Woodson and a few other authors are able to do. Then the final and 10th book in my list of the best fictional works that I've read in 2020 is Ocean Wong's On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I have a similar, I have, I have a single review of that book on my channel that I'm going to link to up above the title now. And um, this is about a Vietnamese immigrant to the United States, a young boy, and his uh, the story of his mother, of his grandmother, and himself um, in um, Hartford, Connecticut. Beautifully poetic, um, heartbreakingly sad at times, but also positive in a way that um, it's the story of survival. That's what it is. 
And uh, these were my 10 books of 2020 so far that I would recommend to you for summer reading if you haven't read them. Uh, but I also want to give you some statistics about the 30 books that I've read so far. So give me a minute and I will come back with statistical. So now let me finish this uh, walkthrough of my 30, of not my 30, but my 10 favorite books with a little statistics about the 30 books that I've read so far in 2020. Um, I read 20 books by written by women, which is two thirds of all the books that I've read. And nine of the books were written by men and one book was written by a non-binary person. Um, I read six non-fictions, I read one memoir, three short story collections, one poetry collection, which is by a deceased author, Charles Bukowski, and 19 novels in 2020 so far, 19 novels. Five of the um, books that I've read were written by black authors, both American, Canadian and British. I've read uh, six books that have been written by Asian authors, both American and Canadian. And I read two books that were written by Latin X authors. And um, I don't comment on that furthermore. I have uh, the next book I'm going to review and which this is going to be my next video. I'm pretty sure about it is um, Camila Shamsi's Home Fire. I have continued to read that yesterday and I really uh, like it. It, it. it caught me with a twist yesterday and that's why I want to, to continue reading it to know how it's going to end very soon. This will be on Thursday probably, my Thursday review, the 11th review, of, single review in my, on my channel. And as always, I thank you very much for watching this and tell all your friends about it, to subscribe to the channel, to come to the channel, to make comments. Have a great Sunday evening wherever you are in the world. Stay safe and stay calm. Peace and love and goodbye.